September 12, 1962. Under the pressure of the Cold War, the Bay of Pigs fiasco, a literal target on his back, and Russian dominance in space travel, President John F. Kennedy addressed the nation. His purpose was to galvanize the public to support an extremely bold goal, that by the end of the decade, America will reach the moon. Doing so was impossible, though. We barely had the technology and the science. At the time, there were no spacesuits, nor space food, nor computing power, no navigation systems, and not even a functional rocket. It was almost a stuff of fantasy. Nonetheless, Presidents Kennedy, Johnson, and Nixon persisted along NASA and MIT and many other important organizations to ultimately reach the moon. In doing so, they did two main things. First, they inspired a new age of advanced science technology, in other words, deep tech. The second thing, however, is most important. It's this mindset that the Apollo missions imparted onto us. It's this idea that to make progress, we need to be more audacious, more imaginative, more optimistic, more courageous and innovative, and more determined to take on grand challenges. It became clear with Kennedy's style of thinking, we could reach more of these incredibly difficult and lofty goals to solve some of the world's most intractable problems. I dug deeper into that mindset and found a couple of things. First, humans are underutilized. We used to be capable of such big things, the Panama Canal, the Manhattan Project, Apollo missions, and so much more. Now, some of our most innovative people are working on productivity apps and note-taking software and dog walking services. Considering the current rate of scientific and technological progress, we've lost that innovative edge. Second, doing hard things isn't actually that impossible. It's the mindset and the core qualities of the people that do these things that should be more widely known. Anyone can harness it, it's all in the mind. The intersection of those two things is what I want to speak about today. It's about making moonshots, or the absolutely crazy, most bold projects to undertake, yet those that also positively impact millions, if not billions, of people. I love thinking about this in the context of startups. I call them moonshot companies. They're the ones that really reignite the ingenuity that we once had. They're the ones that will induce this golden age of deep tech, or any cutting edge R&D heavy project, at the crossroads of the applied and emerging sciences and technologies. If there's one line that can summarize my talk, it's that we need to make more moonshots. The first reason is that they are they make wide-scale positive impacts. See, we have to forget Milton Friedman's manifesto that the social responsibility of business is to increase its profits, usually at the expense of humans, the environment, or morality itself. See, these are the startups that achieve bold goals in three parts building groundbreaking technologies, leveraging them in a radically creative solution, and solving a deep systemic issue. They are the products of futurism, of exigency and failure and uncertainty. They are risky to pursue, technically difficult, yet vastly rewarding for all of society. They chase abundance, change, and a thousand X returns, not just 10% improvements. They revolutionize an industry or workflow of society while also spreading massive positive externalities into the world. See, moonshot companies are the embodiment of Kennedy's call to action, only applied to some sort of global crisis. They're heroic, they're wise, they're the ones that are building the future. We need to, we, see, we have to protect planetary health, we make new medicines, explore space, solve climate change and food scarcity, stop cyber attacks, there's social issues, societal issues, and so forth. We need to make more of these companies because our closeted dystopian society is packed with problems such as natural disasters, vulnerable infrastructure, pollution, disease, environmental destruction, unemployment, unnatural death, expensive healthcare, aging populations, and so much more. There is so much to solve and so much work to do. However, in the face of all these issues comes entrepreneurs that solve every problem that I just mentioned. Second, doing hard things increases our humanity. There's actually this theory that I really like that we're actually the remnants of dead stars. That supernova from billions of years ago released massive amounts of elements that in turn created life on Earth. With that in mind, it seems as if that we're supposed to be, we have the stellar energy within us and that we're supposed to be doing things of cosmic magnitude. Also, technology fundamentally increases our humanity, and there is this moral imperative to make moonshots. And all of that together means that we need to fulfill our cosmic potential, in other words, our human potential. To do just that, we need to invent, we need to innovate, and to impact, because it is our human purpose to do so.
The only bounds that we have or that these startups have are those placed by ourselves. Yet instead of rhapsodizing, let me put this in realistic terms. I would say that any impactful deep tech initiative can be considered a moonshot. There is no hack to building companies such as these. You just have to go out there and stay persistent. There is, however, a secret sauce that can be used to increase the probability of success, namely the key qualities of the mavericks that launch them, people such as Elon Musk or Laura Deming or Thomas Reardon and so much more. One is that they strive for massive, massive change rather than incremental steps forward. Another is that they celebrate failure and navigate entrepreneurial complexity. Those principles are the demarcating lines between a fraud and a real fixer. They are the closest things that we have to magic. They have this vibrant passion for the issue at hand, but systematically take it one chunk at a time with precise execution and a clear mind. They channel charisma into the work, but are also introspective, reflective leaders. This leads to hyperfluency, which is having this insatiable curiosity to relentlessly learn more about a given field. Next, they are incredibly technical and pragmatic in the fields at play, yet also weird, unconventional, and childlike. A byproduct of this is asking why, how, and what to everything, essentially having this unwavering skepticism about generally assumed truths and knowledge, whether that means being rebellious or taking advantage of existing trends. On the other hand, it also entails not waiting to be told what to do. See, radical creativity spurs from taking initiative and doing disruptive things you're not supposed to. Similarly, it also means being responsibly irresponsible or profoundly understanding a concept, but also moving fast and being resilient to change. Besides all of that, I found that moonshot company founders are those that employ mental models, which are models for how we understand the world. They shape what we think and how we understand, but also the connection and opportunities that we see. First principles thinking, or finding the root cause and meaning of anything, is so important. See, finding the core assumptions of a problem at hand, and, the work, and, and, and they work their way up. They're advantageously divergent, a fancy word for the idea that extreme people yield extreme results. They maximize serendipity and position themselves for luck to come towards them. But most importantly, they use second order thinking and systems thinking. In other words, they are wise and heroic. They understand the consequences of their action and the consequences of those consequences and how it affects all aspects of society. They understand that failure comes from a failure to imagine failure. You get the point. It's this level of passion, ambition, resilience, and thinking that's really necessary for building a future, yet accessible to literally everyone and all of you individually. The thing is that there are some of these, many of these companies out there. You have AI-powered drug discovery, people building 3D printing factories on the moon, quantum computing startups, city building startups, even mind control with those with disabilities. The most sci-fi sounding things ever that are driven by profit and purpose. They are the ones that make the future, and as the famous quote says, the best way to predict the future is to invent it. So think about it. What's the one impact you want to make on the world? What's your sort of dream lifestyle that you want to live? What sort of positive changes do you want to make for everyone? Now is the best time for you all to really make a difference in the world. And with that, I want to thank you for all your time, and just remember, let's go make some moonshots. Thank you.